It's Rand on Real Estate with Greg Rand. Rand, I'm your host, Rand on Real Estate on 77 WABC. I'm here with Laura Smith, my co-host. How are you? Great to be with you once again. Yep, glad to be here with you. So we have a great show on tap for you today. We're going to be talking about freedom and the pursuit of happiness. This is a show, as you know, about capitalism and entrepreneurship, regardless of the economy, regardless of the recession. How do you go out there and take care of yourself, take care of your family, pursue uh, whatever your dreams are? And we focus, obviously, on real estate here, but real estate is just the business that I know best. So you can apply this to other things if you're an entrepreneur, if you're wired like I am to want more out of life and, and do it yourself. Well, Maybe there's other ways you can do it, but I'm going to teach you how to do it with real estate because maybe you don't have a plan. I'm going to show you a plan that can work for you. We're going to look around and and take some lessons from world events that are in the headlines this week, talk a little bit about current events and try to tie them in with how to um, accomplish great things for yourself. We're going to take your calls. One of the things we're going to focus on today is some of the things that hold people back. Uh, from investing in real estate. And I don't mean just now in this particular economy. I mean in general. I've been in this business my whole life, and I hear, and I'll share some research data with you, um, that there are a lot of people out there. Uh, chances are, wherever you are right now, if you look around, the people around you have thought about it. They've, they've dreamt about it. They've talked to their spouse or significant other about it, but they haven't done anything about it. And there are reasons. And we did a survey, and I'm going to share with you the top three reasons and I want to hear your reasons. So give us a call. The number here is 800-848-WABC. That's 800-848-9222. And talk about whatever you want. But if specifically, I want to hear from people who maybe have thought about making an investment in real estate. Maybe, you, maybe you've noticed there's a housing crisis. Have you noticed there's a housing crisis going on? Laura? I think I heard something to yeah. that effect. Some whispers out there about that, right? It's been going on for a few years now. And it's kind of the driver of this whole economic recession. But you know what? The flip side of this crisis is an opportunity that's unprecedented since the Great Depression. In fact, my book is out this week. I'm really excited about that. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, my book is called Crash Boom, and it is a study of the Great Depression and the similarities of the Great Depression with today's recession. And what you're going to see, what I found through the research that I did, um, was there are some striking similarities. They're very, very tied into human nature and um, and people's behavior and people's confidence, overconfidence, which turns to underconfidence. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I learned and it, it, it changed me was the fact that after the Great Depression, that was a massive overcorrection in real estate values, and it's happening again right now. So the reason why I started a new company called Own America, my website is ownamerica.com. I'm looking to teach the world how to do real estate right in America. Uh, and the way I, way, reason I say that is that I, I wouldn't have believed, Laura, if, if you bet me 10 years ago, uh, if 11 million people would have screwed up ownership of real estate in America, I wouldn't have believed it because it was so easy. It's, it was simple. The variables weren't so wild. You know, you bought something, you moved into it or you rented it out, you held onto it for a long time and it worked. But every time you introduce these new crazy variables of no money down, hyper leverage, Buying and flipping, all that kind of crazy stuff. Well, all of a sudden, we have a lot of people out there whose expectations were wrong. Those expectations were not met. And now a lot of people are scared off of real estate. And I'm trying to remedy that because it really is a great way to build wealth long term. It's a great business for you to start on the side. Um, And so ownamerica.com is a place where we offer training to investors. We offer training to real estate professionals who... Um, who want to learn this business and be able to share it with their clients. And we have Crash Boom um, on sale there now, also available on Amazon. So grab a copy of that because it's not that long. You know, it took me two years to write, but it's only 200 pages. I just didn't have any more than that in me, it turned out. So, well, you're a busy guy. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But I'm really proud of it. I'm excited about it. And I think that um, probably the coolest part of the book, the part that I enjoyed the most was the research about the depression where – after I had read whatever I could find on the subject, you pretty much figure out pretty quickly that the historians nailed down the timelines. They nailed down what happened, and, and there's a couple of opinions of why different things happened. But you read the historical record, and you can do that in 15 minutes on Wikipedia. And I went and bought a bunch of books and read them, and it was all the same stuff. But it was the interviews that I did, and we've actually had some of those interviews here on the air, people who lived through it. Mm-hmm people who are in their 90s right now and uh, lived through the Great Depression and really inspiring stories. And I put a few of them in the book that were especially inspiring because they bucked the trend. They 
had a great childhood during the Great Depression. How could that be, right? But they did, and their stories are in there. And I may share a little bit about that, one of those with you later on today. Uh, but first, I want to focus on what's happening out there in the news. Um, I just found it so uh, fascinating that if you turn on the TV right now, pick a channel, it doesn't matter. You're going to see something going on on the TV, and that is, it's a protest. Okay, mm-hmm. There's protests going on everywhere right now. And they kind of fall into two categories, right? You've got the people overseas who are protesting because they want freedom. They want freedom, okay? And it's spreading like wildfire out there. In fact, I shouldn't use the analogy wildfire because they are actually on fire, a lot of these cities right now. People are are willing to risk everything. They're willing to stare down the barrel of a gun from their own army uh, because they've had it. They're fed up. Like the Libyan thing was really striking because I remember when I was in high school when um, the first time I heard the name Muammar Gaddafi was when we were having trouble with him back in the 1980s. And you think about that. We went through two terms of Ronald Reagan, one term of George Bush Sr., two terms of Bill Clinton, two terms of George Bush Jr., and now we're in the first term of Barack Obama, and they still are stuck with Gaddafi over there. Mm -hmm. You know, like my entire life, they've had the same guy running the show over there, and he's not a good guy. Um, And all they want is what we have. That's what strikes me. All they want is what we have. You see young people over there who, I guess because of the internet and because of media and because now they can see what life could actually be like if they just didn't have a dictator running their country and they had the right to elect their own leaders and, and pursue happiness. Because that, that to me is the most powerful thing about why I think our country works so well. And some people will probably call and say, our country doesn't work well, our country stinks. Well, I don't think so. I think our country works really well, warts and all. It's the pursuit of happiness that that's the thing, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I feel like when I first heard that and it first struck me, it was years ago, and I remember thinking serious people would think the pursuit of happiness is frivolous, right? Pursuit of happiness. This is, what is that? Running around in a garden and singing and dancing? That's not serious stuff. That's, that's mamby-pamby. That's not, that, that's, not, that's not what responsible adults should be trying to do. On the contrary, the pursuit of happiness, it's what makes your life and makes this experience in this country great. Um, you know, it reminds me of it's, it, you hear a lot of people who try to tell you that you're supposed to be focused on taking care of other people. Okay. We're supposed to be worried about other people and I am, and we all are. Okay. Everybody, you have compassion for other people, but you're supposed to take care of yourself first. Okay. It's like on the airplane. When you get on the airplane, they tell you if the oxygen goes bad or whatever, and that little oxygen mask pops down, they tell you, put yours on first, then take care of the person next to you if they need your help. Right. Right. Same thing in life. So here we see across the, across the globe, especially in the Middle East, you've got major protests going on, and they want freedom. And then you've got protests in this country, and they want something different. They've got what the other guys and gals want. What they want here is benefits. They want power. Um, and I'm, listen, I know that I'm going to make some people mad. I, uh, this kind of thing makes it sound like I'm going up against the unions in the conversation, but I'm not. The, the thing that I'm drawing from this is that... Those protests are full of a bunch of people who are being let down because they thought they were, they were secured. They thought that their compensation, their benefits, and their retirement pensions were secured, and it turns out that it's not. It's just another example of anybody who depends on the government, anybody who depends on their employer, anybody who depends, in this case, on their union to negotiate a package for them. You look around you, and what do you see? People who thought they could rely on something, and it turns out they can't. Turns out they can't. And I want people in this country to remember that we have what people across the globe are fighting and we are willing to die for. We have the ability to go start a business, to live where we want to live, to move if we don't like it, okay? To read what we want to read, to watch what we want to watch, to try to be whatever it is that we want to try to be. And so how do you buck a negative economy? How do you deal with the fact that if it turns out that you are a public employee union who now you thought that you had, after 20 years of working hard, a pension secured, and now you find out maybe you don't, maybe this whole tide of renegotiating pension deals is going to wind up affecting you, what do you do? You know, it's not your fault. You, I, I want the best deal I can get, okay? So if somebody's willing to negotiate on my behalf collectively and I get a great deal, whatever it is I want, it. someone wants to take it away from me, I'm going to fight to keep what I've got coming to me. But at the end of the day, they don't necessarily have it coming to them. And so the message is, what you do have is the freedom to choose your own path. What you do have is the ability to start thinking about taking care of yourself 
which obviously you're doing. You're going to work every day. But taking care of yourself, realizing that what you have, the best thing you have going for you is your own ability to go out and make something happen out of nothing. Uh, so we're going to focus on that. I want to take some calls. I want you to give us a call here at 800-848-WABC. Um, tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me if you think I'm right. Um, I like it better if you tell me you think I'm wrong because it's more fun to debate these things than it is to agree. Um, but also give me a call and let's talk about a business plan for you. Have you thought about it? What's holding you back? How can I help you get this plan bulletproofed? How can I help you find diamonds in the rough? Let's get out there and make it happen. This is Greg Rand. You're listening to Rand on Real Estate on 77 WABC. We'll be back in a 